This song might be familiar to you. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru. Okay, well listen to this. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru. Republic Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador too. Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still. Rob Paulson has a voice that helped define 90s cartoons. Hey, God, play brilliant! Okay, well, let's see. I'm Yakko Warner. Hello, nurse. I'm also Pinky from Pinky and the Brain. And uh, for those of you who are fans of Jimmy Neutron, I'm Carl. I'm the little fat guy. And you did Raphael from the original Ninja Turtles, right? Yeah, Raphael sounds a lot like me. I say things like, um, Shredder, you tin-faced geek, get back here and taste cold turtle steel. Okay, we got a couple of great eight ding-dongs on our hands. And all the voices, they have a background story. Oh no, I feel a flashback coming on. Let's go. Where did the inspiration from Pinky come from? Well, for me, it was a large part of my deep abiding love for British humor. Here's a little joke for you, Pinky. Knock, knock. Well, that's not a very funny joke, is it? Peter Sellers was a huge inspiration, but um, for some reason, Mr. Spielberg, in his infinite wisdom, decided it was a good fit with Maurice LaMarche, who was the brain. So, here we are. Wait, Steven Spielberg? Oh my god, there he is. He produced Pinky and the Brain. And Animaniacs? Wait, wait, wait. And he did Saving Private Ryan, Twister, Men in Black, and Schindler's List while he was making these cartoons. Okay. <laughs> IMDb sidetrack over. Sorry. Uh, back to Rob. Okay, great. Okay, so Yakko from Animaniacs. Where did his voice come from? Only our hairdresser knows for sure. They decided on this little uh, sort of helium-based voice that had kind of a smart-ass vibe a la Groucho Marx. Hey, Batman, does Dracula know you're wearing his cape so badly? And as for the song where he sings every country in the world? The interesting thing is it only took me one take to record it. The song is a beautifully crafted piece. That's the difficult part, not singing it. Queen Mauritania, then Transylvania, Monaco, Liechtenstein, Malta, and Palestine, Fiji, Australia, Sudan. Some other places you can hear him were in Goof Troop, Darkwing Duck, Gummy Bears, Tiny Toon Adventures. The list goes on. This guy is kind of legend. I don't write him, and I don't draw him. I'm just a singer. But it is a cool thing to be associated with those shows. It's pretty cool. Nobody cares what I look like, so I can do it as long as I can breathe. games are some of the most iconic of all time. Round one, fight! And when you're winning, nothing is sweeter than hearing these two words. Finish him! But what man could be so evil Fatality. to channel such a demonic voice? Feel the power of Shao Kahn! You are nothing! <laughs> My name is Steve Ritchie, and I'm a pinball and video game designer. In the early 90s, Steve was making pinball machines in the very same building a couple of guys were developing the second Mortal Kombat game. Upstairs with pinball. Downstairs, video development. Steve did the voices for a bunch of pinball machines he designed. Most of the time I do, I do bad guys, and this is the voice that I have. And it can be, I am the Black Knight. And for ACDC, a devil. I'm on the highway to hell. <laughs> so, when the Mortal Kombat creator needed a new voice for the announcer, he knew right where to go and pulled Steve into the recording booth. And he started telling me, say it like this, fatality. He would say, now more breathy, lower, fatality, flawless victory. That little R had to be rolled slightly, okay. Round one, fight. One. Oh, that was it? Oh, well, you have to add the effects, you know, so the lower pitch. Finish him. Whoa, cool, okay. Johnny Cage wins. Mortal Kombat has spawned a dozen video games, comic books, 
TV shows, and a film franchise featuring this awesome techno song. But Steve's contribution to Mortal Kombat isn't what he's known for. It's pinball. Because Steve, he's made a lot of pinball machines. I've created more pinball machines than anyone else in pinball history. But whether he's a voice in a video game or designing a pinball machine, the thing Steve loves most, well, we'll let him tell you. I like to put the player in a spot of an adversarial relationship, a battle. You're beating the ball, smashing it into things. To experience Mortal Kombat, you know it's a video game, but when he says something, it's like, round one, fight! It's just like, he's scary and, and you are battling this guy. Hey Steve, finish him! Just kidding, you should do it, Steve. Finish him. <laughs> That's sort of a quiet one. Villains from 80s cartoons had a similar sound. You overgrown fur coat, you let him get away! And there was a reason for that. Most were voiced by this guy. What? Alan Oppenheimer. My name's Alan Oppenheimer, and I'm an actor. Most famously, he's the voice of Falcor from NeverEnding Story and Skeletor <laughs> from He-Man. Why are you asking me these stupid questions? <laughs> get a life! <laughs> Regarding He-Man Masters of the Universe, I was Skeletor. I figured the voice would reverberate inside that bony head. So that's why he went up in here, nasal. <laughs> you boob, you idiot, why are you bothering living? <laughs> You've got a better life somewhere else. Get out of my face. He did some other villainous voices. <laughs> them, my pet. Grab them. Cruelty. <laughs> There does seem to be some relation there. I stole from myself. I mean, I've, hey, if I plagiarize myself, you know, no, sue me, you know. Come in, you royal boob. But then there was Falcor. Falcor was the luck dragon. He's kind and he's big and fuzzy. My name is Falcor. And he's flying, so you have that feel of, whoa, let's go, a trail. See? And he actually did a few other characters from NeverEnding Story. Very tasty. Oh, I love, mmm, quartz is so tasty. Mmm. Get the picture. Alan's had an amazing career. For me, though, I like Falcor. Alan, will you do the voice again? The trail get on my back and we'll fly. Oh, there are those bullies. Let's get them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Tell me if this voice sounds familiar. Sweet Lion of Zion! What about this one? In brightest day, in blackest night. Okay, you definitely know this one. Fifty years have passed, and I do not age. We could easily keep going through his 300 other characters, but let's just cut to the chase and meet the man behind the voice. This is Phil Lamar, and he's a voice actor. I'd say the ones that I'm probably best known for. Hermes Conrad, certified bureaucrat from the show Futurama. I didn't know. Rick Cow of Moscow! Virgil. Virgil Hawkins, a.k.a. Static Shock from Static Shock. John Stewart, Green Lantern from Justice League. No evil shall escape my sight. Ollie Williams, the weatherman from Family Guy. Ollie Williams has the story. Ollie? I'm at the wrong airport! Oops, well, thanks, Ollie. Wilt from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. One of my favorites is Dracula from Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. And of course, the samurai known as Jack from the cities of the same name. He who wears a mask cannot see what lies within himself. When I was 
working on Pulp Fiction. Wait, you were in Pulp Fiction? Of course. Yeah. Here, let me jog your memory. Marvin. Marvin. Marvin! I'd knock that shit off if I was you. Oh, you're Marvin. And I was one of the original cast members on uh, Fox's Mad TV. No way, I love Mad TV. And you must have been a 14-year-old boy in the 90s. Very funny, Phil. Anyway, you were saying? With Samurai Jack, I felt there should be some tie to his roots. So it was a very light Japanese accent on English. We began to refer to as a young Asian Clint Eastwood voice. And Hermes from Futurama, where did that voice come from? When I first started out doing the Jamaican accent for Hermes, he was pretty much a heavy patois. And it, it muddied up the comedy. So, eventually, your Hermes accent got pulled back, which is a lot easier to understand. What about Jon Stewart from Justice League? To me, if you got a chest this big, you gotta have a deep voice. My name is Jon Stewart, Green Lantern of Sector 2814. And how about Static Shock? That voice was basically just myself at 14. It was just that idea of, you know, a young kid, you know, who's a responsible guy, but, you know, he just happens to have electrical powers. And to me, that is the character I relate to the most. You know, Static is just, you know, me. The differences between stage, film, voice acting, are really technical. If that plane leaves and you're not on it, you're gonna regret it. One of the benefits we have in animation is... I can play this guy. And I can also play this guy. You'll see what I'm talking about. Just right there in the same day, same room, same microphone. You know, because that's why we got into this, to play characters. You will bow before the con. All right, Tara, in this one, um, Rocky's at a mountaintop. He gets swatted by the monster tail. He falls, tumbles and rolls, and falls off another ledge, falls another bunch of, bunch of feet, and then crashes. All right, um, uh, watch my hands. I'll watch you. Here comes the... Perfect. <laughs> my name is Tara Strong, and I'm mostly known for my animation career. I'm the voice of Timmy Turner from The Fairly Odd Parents. I wish Cosmo and Wanda were here. <laughs> I was Baby Deal, and that's my camera. Powerpuff Girls. I'm just as tough as Blossom and Buttercup. I'm hardcore. Uh, Raven from Teen Titans, Azeroth, Metrion, Zinthos. Originally I was Batgirl alongside Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy. I've had a really fun career. Man, that was one tough montage. So I knew Timmy had to be... Happy, mischievous, silly, kinda nerdy. Oh, and very, very adventurous. Sorry, I was just trying to help. Bubbles had this weird way of pronouncing things like... Oh, I don't have a picky. Like, I don't know why. It goes L-E like that, but... <laughs> Poopy! The time I booked Rugrats, I just got off a plane with a screaming baby, and I'm like, that's the cry that I'm doing. And most of Dill's lines were in the stage directions, so I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, my lines. <laughs> I remember at the session, we had to stop tape, and I'm thinking something's wrong, and they said, Tara, there's a new mom in the studio, and you're making her lactate. <laughs> and you guys say I'm not funny, but seriously, this will be extremely painful. In the case of Raven, while I was doing the audition, it was similar to my own voice, and I thought, just this idea to have this weird guttural roll every time she says anything. And as soon as I started doing this, I saw all the people in the booth kind of look at each other and went, that's Raven. Robin, stop! Batgirl was me. Like, it's the only voice I do that's my own voice. It would be possible if you could do that last bit as Batgirl. And that was Batgirl. <laughs> 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 Bowwinkle 
It's like that classic story, the lion and the mouse that we're ripping off. When you're voice acting, you have to tap into the ability to make something believable without it being there. It's a completely different art form than on camera. You have to let the audience feel what it's like to fall off a cliff without there actually being a cliff there. Like you gotta have to be willing to play around and not afraid to look silly. And then once you create a character, in my experience, they like live up in my brain and they're just ready to come down when it's their turn. So I don't confuse them. They all are their own entity. Basically, I'm a crazy person. So I just need a long scream as you just keep going. Yeah! Hey. Uh, what, do you need, what do you need at the store? Garbage bags? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Fried chicken sounds great tonight.